بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مائی نیم از ڈاکٹر صادق علی اینڈ اگین آئی ایم فرام ڈاکٹر صادق علی لیکچر سائٹس اینڈ ٹوڈے آئی ول گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اے ویری ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک اینڈ دیٹ از کامنلی وی کین روٹینلی پرسکرائب ان دا میڈیکل پریکٹس اینڈ دس ٹاپک از سوپر سوپر امپورٹنٹ فار پریکٹیکل کلینیکل پریکٹس ایز ویل ایز فار ڈفرنٹ میڈیکل ایگزامس سو ٹوڈے ٹاپک از اباؤٹ dexa methason suppression test now we will discuss that what is dexa methason suppression test now before going to the actual test we should know some basics now you people know this is a hypothalamus which is the part of brain and that is present in the fore brain after the hypothalamus we have pituitary gland that is called master gland of the body or hypophyseal gland present in the cella tarsica of the sphenoid bone Now pituitary gland has two lobes one is anterior another is posterior lobe and they are connected and they are separated by the help of pars intermedia and there i just draw a gland known as adrenal gland so this gland if i told you this is called adrenal gland and this gland lies above the kidney that's why this gland is also referred as suprarenal glands now this gland has two part one is the outer part of the gland another is inner part of the gland now the outer part of adrenal gland that is called adrenal cortex that is called adrenal cortex the outer part of the gland is known as adrenal cortex but if we see the inner part that is called adrenal medulla now this is called the adrenal medulla so adrenal medulla also releases a very very important substances but now we are just focusing on the adrenal cortex now adrenal gland are the gland which lies above the kidney and it is divided into two parts one is the outer part of the gland that is called adrenal cortex one is inner part of the gland that is called adrenal medulla but in the cortex we have further three layers the outer layer is called zona glomerulosa which releases a hormone known as aldosterone that is called aldosterone and this aldosterone is also referred as mineralocorticoid that is called mineralocorticoid now if we can see this zona fasciculata which is the middle layer of the adrenal cortex it releases cortisol and this cortisol is also known as glucocorticoid it is also known as gluco corticoid that is called glucocorticoid and zona reticularis will releases androgen which are the sex hormone like estrogen progesterone etc and testosterone now just focusing on the dexamethasone suppression test okay, what is the meaning of this test actually so before that as i told you we should know a bit little physiology in the hypothalamus we have a releasing hormone known as ACTRH that is called ACTRH stand for adrenocorticotropic releasing hormone or we can say for example corticotropin releasing hormone that is called CRH so ACTRH and CRH all releasing hormone they almost come from hypothalamus now when CRH and ACTRH they come from hypothalamus they will go down and goes toward the anterior lobe of pituitary gland they will come from hypothalamus and goes into the anterior lobe of the pituitary from the pituitary gland the crh will releases another hormone and that is called acth that is called acth very important and acth via the blood when reach to the adrenal gland adrenal gland this acth will act mainly on the middle layer and that is called the zona fasciculata that is called zona fasciculata now for me three things are very important the first thing from the hypothalamus crh is coming corticotropic releasing hormone and then goes toward anterior pituitary and from where it releases acth adrenocorticotropic hormone and adrenocorticotropic when goes act on the zona fasciculata it mainly releases another hormone that is known as cortisol so that hormone is called cortisol so this is a very very important and very very basic knowledge you people must know before doing dexamethasone suppression test now this concept is known as in this concept there is hypothalamus so that is called hypothalamic that is called hypothalamic and there is acth come from pituitary hypophyseal 
that is hypothalamic hypophyseal and they release cortisol that is called of adrenal now this whole system this whole mechanism is known as hypothalamic hypophyseal adrenal axis now this is called h h a axis hypothalamic hypophyseal adrenal axis now if you know this much physiology now our topic is super super easy now we can come to the main topic what is meant by dexamethasone suppression test now before that i am going to just remove some of the area and we will go toward the main thing okay what is meant by dexamethasone suppression test now for that we should know this middle layer as we discuss that is called zona fasciculata because zona fasciculata will release a hormone known as cortisol that is called of cortisol now remember a condition which is characterized by increased cortisol level in the body that is called cushing syndrome that is called cushing syndrome now to check that cushing syndrome is there or not for that reason we should go for dexamethasone test but dexamethasone test is are of two types one is low dose dexamethasone another is called high dose dexamethasone now dexamethasone test is done to check for cushing syndrome and it is also done to check for that the cause of cushing syndrome either pituitary or either ectopic either from lungs or somewhere now before that we should go for the first one that is called low dose dexamethasone remember low dose dexamethasone test ab low dose dexamethasone what is the meaning of this test low dose dexamethasone test or low dose dexamethasone suppression test actually i want to tell you guys remember when we give dexamethasone to someone it is a synthetic steroid and it is exactly like cortisol like glucocorticoid in a normal healthy person if you give dexamethasone from outside in low dose in a healthy person there will be decrease what there will be decrease acetyl why you are going to give dexamethasone so serum cortisol will be high and acetyl will be low this that is called dexamethasone if you give dexamethasone from outside synthetic the natural cortisol level will be low and that is the normal physiology if my adrenal gland produce cortisol and if i receive from outside and if i increase my serum cortisol by dexamethasone so my adrenal gland negatively inhibit the synthesis of cortisol so the first thing to remember in a healthy person if we give dexamethasone the healthy person cortisol natural synthesis will be decrease now if for example if we low give low dose of low dose mean if we give 1 mg dexamethasone 8 11 pm during the night 11 pm we give dexamethasone 1 mg and meyer serum cortisol meyer serum cortisol then we can meyer serum cortisol 8 8 am early in the morning that is called low dose low dose dexamethasone mean what how much dexamethasone is considered for low dose right that is 1 mg if we give 1 mg dexamethasone to the patient at 11 pm and then early in the morning we check serum cortisol at 8 am so there is two possibilities number one either acth suppress or not suppress so that is called if acth we check acth cortisol and acth we check and that is suppress if it is suppress then this is something else if it is not suppress that is remain elevated then something else now if we give low dose dexamethasone and if we give dexamethasone in low dose but it make acth suppress it's mean that the cushing syndrome is acth independent and then the problem will be adrenal gland now this is called acth independent 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 cushing that is called acth independent cushing syndrome right that is called of acth independent if we give low dose dexamethasone around the 1 mg but if it does not suppress acth if it is does not suppress acth that is called acth dependent that is called 
ACTH dependent Cushing. Now, what is the meaning of this? That is called ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome. So now, remember very very important one. If I give low dose dexamethasone, if low dose dexamethasone not able to suppress ACTH, if it's still elevated, it's mean that is ACTH dependent. It's mean there's something wrong in the pituitary that releases more ACTH and more ACTH will work on zone of fasciculata and that releases the cortisol. Before that, I'm going to write a little bit more further detail with easier concept. For example, if the problem lies in the adrenal gland itself, like zone of fasciculata, which increase cortisol, that is called Cushing syndrome. But if the problem in pituitary, pituitary and if it releases more ACTH and then ACTH can cause more release of cortisol then it is called Cushing disease. So when the problem primarily in the gland, adrenal gland and it increases cortisol that is called Cushing syndrome. But when the problem in pituitary and it increases ACTH which cause increased cortisol then Cushing disease. If we give low dose dexamethasone if ACTH level is suppressed it means we are adding more dexamethasone with cortisol, negative feedback goes and decrease ACTH. It's mean the rise of cortisol not dependent upon the ACTH. That is the primary Cushing syndrome. It may be heterogenic dexa, it may be exogenous glucocorticoid, it may be something else, but that is called primary Cushing. But if we give low dose dexamethasone, but still ACTH is high, elevated, it's mean that the problem is in the either pituitary gland or ectopic. Now, ACTH high. If ACTH is high and cortisol is also high, it means that either ACTH come from pituitary or this ACTH come from the lungs and that is called ectopic ACTH. So, if ACTH come from the lungs, that will be considered as a ectopic, but if come from pituitary, that will be known as uh, pituitary ACTH. Now, if we give low dose dexamethasone, if still ACTH is high, it means two things. Either the problem in pituitary or the problem in the lungs. For that reason, that from where ACTH comes, for that reason, we should go for high dose dexamethasone. Now, let's see okay, what is meant by high dose dexamethasone. Now, low dose is just to see that either Cushing syndrome is there or not. Now, if Cushing syndrome is present, but ACTH is high, then we have to look for that the reason for increased ACTH is either pituitary or ectopic. For that reason, we should go for, I should write it in red, very important, that is called a high dose dexamethasone. In the high dose dexamethasone, rather than 1 milligram, we give 8 mg at 11 pm and we can measure serum cortisol and we can measure serum ACTH 8 am. Now, in this case, remember, if we give high dose in early in the morning, if ACTH, ACTH, we should go for ACTH, ACTH if it is suppressed. If we give high dose dexamethasone and ACTH is suppressed, because if the problem in pituitary, low dose dexa is not enough to suppress ACTH which comes from pituitary. But if you increase the dose 7 times from 1 milligram to 8 milligram, then this high dose is enough to create a negative feedback to decrease ACTH from pituitary gland. So it's mean if ACTH is very suppressed, then the problem is in the pituitary gland. And that is most probably pituitary adenoma. That is called pituitary adenoma. And if we give high dose dexamethasone, 8 milligram, in spite of that, if still ACTH is remain elevated, it's mean if ACTH is not suppressed, still it remain elevated, it's mean that this come from ectopic side, that is called ectopic production, that is called a ectopic. Ectopic production of ACTH mainly seen in, for example, small cell lung carcinoma, that is very, very important, that is called small cell lung carcinoma, that is called a small cell lung carcinoma. This is a lung cancer, commonly affect smoker, in this cancer, there is ectopic production of ACTH and this ACTH will lead to Cushing syndrome. So this is what all about low dose dexamethasone and high dose. Uh, now I want to sum up in a very, very two to three points, very important. Doctors remember 
If cortisol level in the serum of a patient is high, think about Cushing syndrome. If the problem in adrenal gland itself, think about that is called Cushing syndrome, primary Cushing syndrome. And if the problem in pituitary, because of increased ACTH, if cortisol is high, that is Cushing disease. Now, how to look that Cushing syndrome is there or not? For that reason, we have to go for that is called low dose dexamethasone suppression test. And if we can go for low dose dexamethasone suppression test, if ACTH is suppressed, it means the problem in the gland itself, there is no need to proceed. But if low dose dexamethasone do not able to suppress ACTH, it means the problem is either in pituitary or lungs. To differentiate from where the problem comes, lungs or pituitary, for that reason we should go for high dose dexamethasone. So this is a very very important topic. Today I find a time for you guys to make it super super easy and I will bring a lot of a very complex topic in medical field to make it easier for you guys. Any topic you want to learn from me, you can comment on the YouTube section. You can like, watch and subscribe my channel. And if you want to join us, you can join Dr. Sadiq Lecter for PLAB, US Family, Basic Sciences and Clinical Sciences. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Good evening. Allah Hafiz.